Everybody knows that React lets you build applications fairly fast and easily. Although on the flip side, with this flexibility, it's very easy to mess up the project unless you agree on a specific architecture within your team. So in this video, I'm going to show you three different types of architecture for small, mid and large size application that you can use in your own projects and be proud. And if you're curious, let's get started. So I would like you to imagine that we are Amazon and obviously Amazon's website is huge. It has different sections such as home page, product description page, payments page and so on. And we're going to start with a small architecture example for the Amazon. Most of these files were scaffolded with create a react app, but everything inside folder is mostly custom made. So we're going to have some boilerplate files such as index.tsx and so on. But I also added routing because Every app pretty much has routes. So we're going to go over all these folders one by one, but I'm going to start with components. So inside components, we have different folders, such as home folder, login folder, product description and shared. All these folders act as components, but also like pages of our applications. And they're going to be referenced from our router. Every component has a test for it because we are a good developer and we always make sure that we have tests for our components. But basically, these components such as login, which has a similar file structure, product description, all these components comprise of shared components, such as button, button group card, and so on, that act more like molecule inside or atom inside the molecule. So what you could expect inside the button is something like this, where you have a styled components, for example, you define different button components with some cool CSS, which is also flexible and exported and imported in your components and reuse across your whole app. So this is very cool. But we also have context folder where you can use react context files to share the data across your application from parent to children. We also have hooks because everyone uses hooks to, for example, to fetch the data to manipulate local storage. We also have services file where, for example, in api.tsx, we're going to have predefined functions to talk to our backend APIs and navigation to do some metadata when navigating through the app. And we also have, have some utils because Amazon is a multinational company and we usually need to convert our currencies and so on. But this is basically an overall structure of a small application that I would have where you have maybe like one or two, maximum three developers working on the application and it would be a cool way to work on it. For a mid-size example, we have a different structure. So let's go into the source folder. And here you're going to see that the structure looks a bit different. We have some new folders, but we are also missing some other folders. So one of the additions is obviously features folder, layout folder and pages folder and store, which is a replacement for our context folder. So let's start with the components and you're going to see that Everything that was in a shared folder in our small example is now here and components are no longer treated as pages for our routes. So button can be reused in some other place. And I'm going to show you where. If you look into the features, you're going to see that we have components such as comments, payment selection, recommendation, and so on. And of course, these features can comprise of different other components, but Features are going to use other components that we had in the first folder just above. For example, it can use a button in many of these features. So it's going to act like, like a parent to our components folder. But here we also have pages and pages are the one that we already saw before, although now they live in their separate folder and are going to be referenced from the routes, but they're also going to be parents for our features. So for example, recommendations can be inside the home and product description. Here we also have layout. And as you can see, the header.tsx is no longer in components as it was before. But now since it's more of a layout component, it's going to live inside the layout folder. And how you can use all these all together, you may ask, well, React render props. So you can use uh, features inside layouts and use React render props to pass them around. And you can use React render props again with layout to pass them into pages. As simple as that, you're gonna, your app is going to be very reusable and it's going to be fun to develop. Inside pages, as you already saw, these are pretty much the same things that we had. Hooks 
again, very similar. And we have services, but now we have more nesting, such as API folder. Here, you probably would have more files, such as for an interceptor. You could have some shared services and UI services that are all brought together. And you could also have other folders, such as utils, which is pretty much could stay the same, but could also be divided into different parts. But we also have store instead of the context now, because I think for mid-sized applications, you could use Redux, but again, it's up to you. And I would split the Redux parts based on features, although you can also split them based on pages. So it's very up to you whether you want to use it or not. But this is the overall picture of a mid-sized application, let's say that would comprise of around eight people, maybe maximum 10 developers that could work together on different pages and different features. Obviously, pages would act as a wrapper for different features. So you would mostly collaborate between features because they, they're reusable, but each team within the company would focus on a specific page, in my opinion. Now let's go to large architecture. And this is where it gets more interesting. So inside the large architecture, so far, it looks very similar. But let's go inside the source folder. And now we have something very flat looking because we have only one folder here called modules. And inside modules, we have different types of modules such as home, login, product description and shared. This looks very similar because turns out our pages are now replaced by a module. And inside every module, you're going to have pretty much the same structure that you had before. So every module is going to have different components, features, hooks, layout services, and so on, and kind of an entry file called index.tsx that is going to be reused uh, or referenced inside the routes. So these are going to act like pages. And as you can see, we no longer have pages here. Well, what is the benefit here? Let's say our large application consists of uh, many parts and our company is big. So let's say 50 or 60 people are working on this one application. And now every team, let's say team comprising of 15 developers or 10 developers can focus on one specific module. Of course, the components are again pretty much similar as in the mid size. But now people who are working on a specific page are not necessarily interfering with people who are working on a different page. For example, login and home are not really interfering with each other, but they can still share the code from this shared folder. So this is very cool because shared folder is going to have pretty much the same design as the rest of the modules. If you have any other ideas when it comes to architecture, and if you structure your apps differently, please let me know down in the comments because I'm very, very curious about it. So if you learned anything new today, please make sure you smash the like button so that this video gets shown to other developers and that would be awesome. Oh, one more thing. If you're actually interested in writing clean React code, make sure to check this video as well because it's going to be very useful for you as a programmer. I'm going to see you in the next one.